Hi, I will talk about Goose Henshin Shift. Consider a waveguide. We have a core with refractive index N1, some cladding, and substrate. A planar waveguide. Here is N2, here is N3. Okay. And we have a wave, a beam, which falls at the boundary between the core and the cladding, and then between the core and the substrate. In geometrical optics, this reflection occurs at the boundary. So we have a reflected beam here at some angle of. But due to the finite size of this beam. So we have different values of k vector here. Slightly different. Plus delta k and here is k minus delta k and here is k. Then it appears that this reflection occurs within a material, within cladding or substrate. So the reflection occurs, it looks like the reflection occurs at some depths. And then it is reflected. So if here is some Z, then we have here some delta Z, some shift. And here, here is also 2 alpha here. It's not 90 degrees, just 2 alpha. So we have here a shift between the theoretical geometrical reflection and this real reflection which occurs within a material. And we will call it D. And this volume of the spatial lateral shift is called a Gusshenschen shift. Historically, it is D is a Gusshenschen shift. Sometimes in some textbooks, this delta Z parameter is also called a Goose Henshin shift, but historically, in the article of Goose and Henshin, this D value is called this shift. Keep in mind that, of course, this involves a phase shift due to the propagation in a second medium, but the Goose Henshin shift is a spatial shift. This is a lateral spatial shift. It's just a shift between this geometrical reflection and this real reflection which occurs at slightly different point. The volume of this shift is of the order of micrometers, so it is very, very, very small. If we calculate this shift and draw this D versus the angle of incidence, then here we will have some critical angle, and there is an asymptote, and it will look like this. This goose henshin shift increases while we are approaching the critical angle of incidence. In theory, and here is an asymptote in real life, uh, and uh, the goose henshin shift at the critical angle is of the order of dozens of tens of micrometers. The larger the angle of incidence, the smaller the goose henshin shift. If we draw this delta z on the other hand, and here is alpha, then it will look like this. So it will have some minimum value and it will increase for 
asymptotically for pi over 2. And uh, also here we will have this alpha critical. So this delta z, on the other hand, will increase while we increase the angle of incidence and it will increase as we are getting closer to the critical angle. If we draw this for TE and TM modes, then it will we'll have a very slight difference between TE and TM because for TE and TM modes the value of the goose Henschen shift is slightly different, then we can use this effect to separate this TE and TM polarizations. There will be multiple reflections, so this effect will be much larger. If you have questions, put them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.